Hi everyone and welcome back to Crochet Cricut. This is Christine uh, and today I'm going to do a tutorial to help uh, you get started with crochet. So if you are an absolute beginner and you've never crocheted before, I'm going to do my best to show you the absolute um, most basic information possible to help you get started with crochet today. Okay, so to get started with crochet, you just need a few items. The main two items that you're going to need is some yarn and a crochet hook. Um, there are a few different types of yarn. The most common that you're going to see uh, are going to be acrylic and uh, cotton and maybe wool. Like those are the most common ones. So you've got your natural fibers like cotton. This is a cotton yarn. Um, so it's great for like kitchen items and dish rags and things like that. And then you have uh, acrylic. Now this is a baby acrylic here. Um, so that can be used for any kind of baby items, but also scarves and hats or anything like that. Um, acrylic is usually really easy for beginners to use when they're getting started. And also cotton is great for beginners. I would recommend that you have some acrylic and some cotton so that you can do, you know, any of the beginner projects. Uh, you're also going to need a pair of scissors, a crochet hook. You're going to find the size of the hook that you need based on the yarn label. I'll show you how to read the yarn label in a second, but mainly you're going to need a four uh, and a five and maybe a six millimeter to get started. So just so you have a little bit of flexibility in the size of hook that you uh, use, but a larger hook and a yard <laughs> and a larger yarn uh, weight are better for beginners. You're also going to want to have uh, a darning needle. So like you can see the one that I have here has a blunt tip and a large eye. So it'll fit through these larger yarns will fit through the eye there. And this blunt needle will keep you from accidentally like picking up fibers when you're trying to sew in your tails. Uh, and something that's optional are these little stitch markers. Uh, it can be good for you when you're beginning to have a stitch marker so that you can um, keep up with where you are in the project. Now you can replace this by a paper clip or a spare piece of yarn if you don't have these. So this is optional. Okay, so those are all of our materials and now I'll show you how to read the yarn label. Okay, so with this particular yarn, um, if I turn it around, you'll see here that there are some instructions uh, on the yarn label. Now you don't need to know what all of this means right away when you first get started. What you want to pay attention to, um, you want to pay attention to the hook size. So you see here it has a square telling you what size hook you want to use and it also has a square here telling you um, what size needle. So don't confuse the two. They're not always the same. In this case, they are the same, uh, but the two pointy needles, that's for knitting. And then you have a picture of a crochet hook for crochet. So this tells me that I want to use a four millimeter hook for this yarn. That's recommended. Now you can always test out different hook sizes to see if you like the results. So that's not set in stone. That just will give you, if you had the same, um, if you crocheted with the same uh, tension as the person that made this this swatch here you would have a piece of fabric this big four inches by four inches or ten centimeters by ten centimeters with that hook size um, so this is you're gonna learn more about using that information later but right now all you need to know is for best results for a beginner get a four millimeter and use this yarn um, now over here on the left hand side I've got the yarn weight so this is a three a category three. It goes from category one to six typically and you can use anything from a three to a six as a beginner. Um, a four is going to be the most common that's worsted weight. Three is called uh, lightweight or sport weight. That's also okay. Um, but I would stick ma mainly with the three or a four and um, if you want to do something like a baby blanket you can get a bigger size. It's very chunky and it'll work up faster the bigger the yarn weight. Okay, so that's how you read the label. This other information tells you about how to care for the material. Uh, and up here, they're telling you how to pull from the middle of the ball, the, the yarn. So, and, you know, and every uh, label is going to have that information. So with that being said, let me show you the three 
main stitches, the three most basic stitches that you need to learn to start crocheting. Um, so the very first thing you need to do is figure out how do you want to hold your yarn and how do you want to hold your hook? Um, so holding the yarn, uh, holding the hook, you can hold it two different ways. You can put your thumb on the thumb rest like this and kind of hold it like a knife or you can hold it like a pencil like this. Now I hold mine like this. I put my thumb on the thumb rest and I use my wrist to turn to maneuver the hook. And sometimes I twist the hook in my fingers to turn the hook. Okay, so that's how I do my uh, hook. And then for the yarn, you have to figure out a way that you can hold the yarn so that you get the tension that you want so your stitches will be even. So what I do is I trap between my pinky and my last finger, I trap it there. And then, so that comes on the inside. And then I wrap it over my index finger. And then I have these fingers that I can use for pinching because sometimes you want to pinch in places to stabilize things. So these are, I use these for pinching and um, my tension is right here. So it's, it, it can't be like really loose else it's going to be really hard for you to capture that with the hook. So you want it to be taut like that. You want it to be, um, have some tension in it. You can do it like that, or you can do it on the opposite way. You can hold it all over on the top of your fingers, um, you know, or some people wrap it around their finger many times. So you can practice different ways of holding the yarn. Uh, it's going to take you a little practice. Uh, once you master these two things, you're going to be able to do so, so much. So that being said, let's go ahead and make um, our slip knot to get started. So for the slip knot, you're going to wrap the yarn around your index finger two times, take the back loop, pull it forward, take the back loop and pull it off. And that makes a slip knot. So you can move this knot here and you can insert your hook, pull the short end to tighten. And then you're going to start making chain stitches. So ma to make a chain, all you want to do is you're holding your yarn. You're going to want to pinch all this, you know, just to stabilize it. And you're going to want to be twisting here. So you're going to capture the yarn in that hook. You're going to place it over the top. So that's a yarn over. You're going to hear yarn over, yarn under sometimes when you're learning crochet. So yarn over just means you put the yarn on top of the hook. And then you're going to trap it inside the hook. You're going to tilt it down. That locks it on and pull it through the loop that you have on your hook. That is a chain stitch. So I have one chain. I'm going to repeat that. Yarn over, trap the yarn, lock it, pull it through. Yarn over, trap the yarn, lock it, pull it through. Yarn over, trap the yarn with the hook, turn it down to lock it, pull it through. That's how you do chain stitches. So let's do 12 chain stitches. I have one, two, three, four. So I'm going to do it again. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. And this is what it looks like. Now your chains may not be all even. That's okay. Some may be bigger than others. You're just going to need to practice. And the more you practice, the more even your chain stitches will be. Now your chain stitches do not need to be super tight um, because the single crochet stitches uh, are going to be uh, if you make your chain super tight, what's going to happen is that the bottom will be more narrow than the stitch. So try to keep this a little loose. You just don't want it to be like super, super tight. Okay. And now when we're going to um, do a single crochet, we're going to work that first single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So right now, this chain right here, 
we're not going to count that. So even though we did 12 chains, we're going to have a piece that is 11 stitches wide. It will be one chain shorter because single crochets take one turning chain at the end of each row. So what you're going to do to make a single crochet is you're going to insert your hook into just this one half of the chain. So you see there are two halves that make up the chain. You have a bar on the bottom and a bar on the top. You're going to take that bar on the top, insert your hook inside the, inside the stitch, yarn over, lock the stitch with the hook, twist it down, and pull it up. So now we pulled up a loop and we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over like we did with the chain stitch and this time we're going to pull through both loops. And now we've done one single crochet. Again, we're going to insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up one loop. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. That's our second single crochet. Again, insert, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Let's work single crochets to the end of the row. Great, so we've done row one. Some things to take note of. This is typically the front side of your work. A pattern will indicate whether you're on the front or the back side. So if you were making a coaster or a washcloth or something like that out of single crochet, this could be the front side of the work. This is row one. So you see the little twisties that are left those are the chains you started with and you have your tail on the left side okay it looks like this on the back side so this is the back of the single crochet and this is the front of the single crochet for row two and on every single row that you do you need to do one chain stitch so we'll chain one that is your starting chain. You will not count that as a stitch. It just helps you get the height you need for this row. Then we're going to turn our work to the other side and we're going to work back across these stitches. So instead of going into the, the chain stitch, now we're going into the single crochets from the previous row. And so you'll see on the top of each single crochet, there are two bars that make a V. So you see those two bars there. So for a, a regular single crochet stitch, you're going to go under both of those bars. Like that. You're going to grab your yarn, yarn over, pull up a loop. Again, you have two loops on your hook pull through both loops. Insert your hook into the stitch, 
yarn over, pull up one loop, pull through both loops on the hook. You have two stitches. Third stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through both stitches. And now I have three single crochets. Let's single crochet all the way to the end of the row. When we get to the end of the row, you can see that we have just one stitch left. If you're having a hard time seeing the stitch and knowing what it is, that's when you could have a stitch marker marking that stitch so that you can see it when you get back to it the next time. Okay, so again, you're gonna go under both of the front and back bar of the V Yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And this is what it looks like for row two. And so you can see, we can see the back of the previous row and this is the front of this row and that's row two. So to continue on, you would just repeat that row all the way until your um, project is as tall as you want it to be. And I've been working on one here that I'll show you in another yarn, uh, in another yarn. So this is one of the Bernat ones, uh, cotton. So, you know, you just keep going until you have your project as tall as you want it to be. These can be used for uh, coasters. You can use these for dishcloths. Um, and you could also make two identical pieces and put them together, single crochet around the outside, the two pieces together, to make a pot holder or a hot pad. So um, even the squares that you do with cotton yarn just to practice and learn can be used within your house uh, you know, they're, they're practical use. Um, and cotton is very easy to take care of. It's easy to wash. Um, so it's, it's a low maintenance material that you can use and practice with. And it's also pretty affordable. Okay. So that being said, now let's move on to the third most important stitch to learn for beginners, uh, which is the double crochet. So for the double crochet, uh, I'm going to actually switch to the Baby Love one that I showed you the label for. Oh, it's Burnett Softy. It's not Baby Love. Um, so I like this because it's very soft. The cotton, depending on what cotton you buy, it might be a little rougher. If you get like Hobby, uh, it's pretty soft, but sometimes it can be a little rougher. The acrylic is really soft and it's really nice to work with and it's, um, if you want to make a scarf or something, uh, you know, this will be a great beginner project. So first thing we'll do again, let's make our slip knot. So let's wrap the yarn around our finger two times, pull the back loop to the front and then the back loop off. Great. Insert your hook. And this time let's do a chain of 15. So we're going to pinch the tail to hold that in place. Yarn, uh, yarn over and then pull through the loop on your hook. That's your chain stitch. Remember, yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15. Okay, so that's what the chain stitches look like. Now on this end, with the single crochet, we went into the second chain from the hook. For double crochet, I'm going to go into the fourth chain from the hook because this stitch is twice as tall as a single crochet. So we need that turning chain so that we're at the right height to make our row. So you're going to skip one, two, three stitches. That's the height of my double crochet. We're going to start this stitch actually by yarning over. So you want to have the yarn over your hook and you want to be at the fourth chain. You're going to insert into the fourth chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and now you have three loops on your hook. This time we're going to pull through two and then we're going to pull through two and we've done a double crochet. Again, yarn over to start, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Three loops are on your hook. Pull through two, pull through two. Again, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have made three stitches and this turning chain down here actually because it's substantial it's not the same as the single crochet that we left on the end of that. We are going to count that as a stitch. Some patterns have you counting it, some don't, but I'm going to count it as a stitch in my work. Okay, so we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. So let's do that all the way across our chain. Great. And this is what it looks like once we've done one row. Let's count how many stitches we have. So we have the one on the end, which I will count as a stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen stitches. On the top, you could also count the V's across. If you do that though, you'll see that the very last one is hard to see. This first V down here that you see the first full V goes with that first real stitch we did. This one is a chain, okay? So keep that in mind when you're counting your stitches on the beginning row. So now to begin row two, we're gonna chain up. Sometimes people chain up three for a double crochet. Sometimes they chain up two. It depends on how they want their edges to look. 
I'm going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. I'm going to turn my work to the other side. Now this chain here counts for this very first stitch, so we cannot work into this first gap. Now there are methods that you can use to do this differently so that you have like less gaps here, but I wouldn't worry about that as a beginner. For now, just follow the basics. So this chain counts as this first stitch. We'll skip this first space. We'll yarn over. We'll go to the second space for our second stitch. Pull up a loop. We now have three stitches on our hook. We're going to pull through two and pull through two. So this chain counts as my first stitch and this first stitch is my second stitch. So we have two stitches. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert and remember to go under both bars of the top of the stitch. Pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. One more time, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Let's work to the end of the row. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of the row. What I have left here is my last stitch and then my turning chain. If I only work into the last stitch, I'm going to have this turning chain sticking out. So what I like to do is work into the top of the last chain at the top of that turning chain. So you just kind of work your way into that top chain and pretend like it's a regular stitch. That's only going to happen on the ends where you have your chain stitches. So the beginning chain of this side and the beginning chain here or the ending chain there, the turning chain. Okay, so you can count your stitches. I would recommend that you do count your stitches on double crochet until you get the hang of it. Um, and to begin the next row, you just chain three, turn your work, remember to skip that first space and go into the second space and continue all the way across. So that is how you do a double crochet. A project I would recommend for double crochet would be uh, just a scarf. So just make one as long as you want to make it, get used to making double crochets. Or if you get tired of making your scarf halfway through, connect the two ends together and make it a cowl. I have a lot of cowls that were meant to be scarves and it never happened, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and then this leads you into granny squares. So, um, you know, you can make a regular granny square or a solid granny square with double crochets. So once you get used to that stitch, there's really so many things that you can do. You can join your granny squares with single crochets and you can make hundreds and hundreds of projects with just those three basic stitches. So um, that being said, I have a couple of tutorials of my own uh, that I've done. 
so that um, you guys could, once you learn these basic stitches, you can make those. So I'll link those for you. And uh, if you have project requests, just leave me a comment and I would love to make uh, any requests that you guys want to have. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.